The 6.5 Grendel and the 5.56 NATO. What's best for your AR-15? Dave and I are going to talk about it. Hello, friends and lovers. This is Dave Trillo, and you're listening to the Ammunition Guide podcast brought to you by none other than ammo.com. Now, Chris, when I say the words AR-15, you're probably going to say 556 or 223. Yep. But that's not to say those are the only two interchangeable cartridges that you can uh, chamber an AR-15 for. We're going to talk about one that's that's pretty overlooked and uh, not rightly so. It's a good round. It just hasn't gotten the love deserves and i'm talking about the uh the grendel dave you're absolutely right i have to agree with you that the 6.5 grendel is one that really has not gotten the attention that it truly deserves and if you need 5.56 or 6.5 grendel or any cartridge make sure you click that link down in the description in the pinned comment get your free 20 dollars off coupon for here at ammo.com but you're right dave there are a lot of different cartridges that you can chamber into the ar-15 we've we've talked about some of these on the channel before like the 300 blackout and uh even some of the bigger ones that we we haven't touched on yet like the 458 socom and the 50 beowulf we'll, we'll get yeah. to those hopefully here fairly soon but the 6.5 grendel is a very interesting cartridge because it it fires those really long sleek 6.5 millimeter bullets that really got a lot of popularity with the 6.5 creedmoor yeah it's it's a much heavier bullet than mm -hmm. the uh 5.56 slash 223 can can possibly hold it's uh, i think 124 grains is is about the right ballpark for a 6.5 grendel yeah right around the 123 124 depending on your load i'd say the 123s are a little more popular and easier to find uh it gives you a lot more oomph a lot more bullet than what you would usually get with your normal 5.56 slash 223 cartridge where you're looking at like 55 62 grains are probably the most popular popular ones that you can find out there a lot uh you know less cheaper less expensive rather than some of your heavier match lows like the 77 grain otms or things like that yeah once you get the 77 grains you're kind of maxing out how yep. much bullet that little case can handle but uh yeah, double double the bullet weight Yep. naturally a slower muzzle velocity to come with it though right yeah dave absolutely you're not going to get that full muzzle velocity like you would with that really super light 55 grain you know m193 bullet which is probably running around 3200 feet per second typically for your 6.5 Grendel, right around 2,600 feet per second. I mean, that's no slouch, but definitely the 5.56 is going to be faster and going to have a slightly flatter trajectory because of it. Yeah, uh, you're talking about double the bullet with a muzzle velocity drop of only about 300 feet per second. That's that's impressive. The 6.5 really packs that muzzle velocity in there, and what it's really known for is the muzzle energy. The 6.5 Grendel's packing about 1,800 foot-pounds at the muzzle. Now, we got to be sure. Uh, they typically recommend a muzzle energy of about 260 foot-pounds of energy on impact, the bare minimum for self-defense. Mm -hmm. So either of these rounds at close range is going to do devastating things to the threat that means immediate harm to you and your family. Oh, yeah. But 6.5 Grendel just gives you that much more pooch. It really does. And what I think the niche, in my opinion, that the 6.5 Grendel has carved out for itself is for longer range shooting and being able to maintain that kinetic energy at distance, whereas your typical 5.56 is really starting to peter off. Uh, you know, when you're getting closer to that four or five hundred yard line, you know, the, the six five Grendel is still doing it. I've got uh, right here about right around it's still a thousand foot pounds of energy at 400 yards for the six five Grendel, whereas you're right around under 400 for the five five six. And so it, it really starts losing a lot of that oomph behind it when you get out to range. But you say a thousand foot pounds, and I hear the magic number for whitetail harvest. Yep. That's another thing that the 6.5 Grendel has really excelled at. Now, I know a lot of states don't allow the use of 5.56 or 223 ammunition for deer hunting, and there's a lot of controversy over whether you should use it, whether you shouldn't. But if you're looking at just raw foot pounds, the 6.5 Grendel is going to be your better deer hunting cartridge. So then it becomes a round that's not only good for home defense, if not massive overkill for home defense, but you could take it out into the woods and bag a Bambi. And a lot of, uh, you know, counties and states and, you know, municipalities, territories 
will allow you to use that 6.5 bullet for hunting no different than you could with say like a 260 Remington or a 6.5 Creedmoor. You know, all of these rounds are pretty popular deer rounds and the Grendel is really starting to work its way into that because it gives you that power at range at those standoff distances whereas obviously your 5.56 just isn't going to have it. We're talking long distance accuracy here. 5.56 is effective range. I think it's it's about it's about 400 yards and I may be way off base there. I think that's about the distance you could reasonably expect to hit a human sized target. The 6.5 Grendel crushes that, doesn't it? Easily. 400 yards is probably going to be the, you know, the extent of our capability with the 5.56, but with the 6.5 Grendel, you've easily got longer range than that. 6 700 yards. You know, it really has that beautiful long aerodynamic bullet that helps it get out to that range. And uh, I think that's really one of the big selling points on the 6.5 Grendel. The 6.5 is really a good long range cartridge where, you know, uh, your 5.56 is light, it's easy to shoot low recoil, but uh, yeah, the 6.5 is gonna give you the range. The 6.5 Grendel sounds like all strawberries and ginger beer. So you consider that one cartridge necessarily is gonna cost more just because it, it has twice as much lead, it costs more to ship. Yeah. But it's also gonna be a bit of a, of a rarity, at least compared to America's favorite centerfire rifle cartridges. It's just not not a very popular round. That 5.56, five, you can get it everywhere. We have tons of it here at ammo.com. And it, even if you just want to talk about pure varieties of ammunition, the 5.56 five, and 223 are looking at about a three to one advantage over the 6.5 Grendel. So not only do you have more ammo available that's less expensive, you've got lots of different varieties that can really, you know, you can cherry pick exactly what type of round you want for your situation. For 6.5 Grendel, it's a lot less. And then you got to talk about parts availability as well. I mean, you got to find the barrel and everything for, for a 6.5 Grendel. And, and once again, compared to the aftermarket parts you can find for 5.56, five, you're just looking at a little bit more of an uphill battle to build that rifle. No, you're absolutely right, Dave, because I'm speaking for myself personally. I'm actually looking to build a 6.5 Grendel right now, and finding a barrel has been a little bit tricky. There are a lot of different manufacturers out there, but I mean, everybody and their brother has a different 5.56 five, or 223 Wild out there for you uh, that you could easily pick up for your AR-15 build if that's something that you want to do. The other limiting factor when speaking of barrels with a 6.5 Grendel, you really need to be looking at a longer barrel for that. These, you know, shorter like 14 and a half, 16, 18 inch barrels, it really doesn't milk the cartridge for everything that it's worth is really what I'm trying to say here. You really need that longer barrel with the 6.5, which isn't necessarily going to be the greatest for home defense. And this is one of the main issues that I think that they've had with getting this thing widespread out there uh, is their, their tendency to just trademark all their stuff. I mean, you look at things like the 50 Beowulf, which is another round that they also made. A lot of companies can't manufacture ammunition for it because they've trademarked the name. You know, even the SAMI, the Sporting Arms and you know Ammunition uh, Manufacturers Institute, there we go, uh, won't take cartridges that are trademarked. So that's another thing that'll hold a lot of companies back. So then is the 6.5 Grendel just kind of a, a niche thing that you should kind of avoid if you don't want to get stuck? during an ammo drought or just trying to find parts or ammo for it on a good day? Yeah, I mean, that's definitely something that you need to be a little bit concerned about is being able to find those replacement parts. Now, that being said, most shooters aren't going to be able to shoot out a barrel in their lifetime unless you're going out to the range every weekend and you are just mag dumping after mag dump. Uh, it's unlikely that you're going to be able to shoot that barrel out and your bolt should last a long time if you get a high quality bolt. Otherwise, other than that, most of the other parts are interchangeable for the 6.5 Grendel. Uh, but yeah, problems is finding ammunition. If you don't have a good supplier, you don't hand load like myself or something like that, it can really be a problem just going down to the range and, you know, slinging a couple boxes, you know, down at some paper targets or a tin can at the end of your, you know, your property. Uh, it definitely makes the 5.56 the better option for most shooters because you can just go out and there's ammo everywhere. We have tons of it here at ammo.com uh, to get all your different varieties that you could ever possibly need. Whereas 6.5, it's, it's a little more difficult to come by and it kind of makes it more difficult to justify that purchase. So to that end, to the, to the every man who's just looking for their first or even second rifle, we would wholeheartedly endorse the 5.56. 
Absolutely, Dave. Uh, 5.56 has to be one of America's calibers. It's right up there with the 45 ACP, in my opinion, and the 30 out 6 uh, has been our go to cartridge for the military for years. And, uh, you know, it's not showing any signs of slowing down. I don't care whether they're taking on the 277 Fury or not. The 5.56 is here to stay. It's not going anywhere, and you can pick it up relatively inexpensive compared to the 6.5 Grendel. Now, that being said, if you want to shoot long range or you want to hunt with it, the 6.5 is a great option, especially if you're looking for taking shots at range. Uh, if you need something that's in close and you don't really care too much about distance, the 6.8 SBC is another great option for you know an AR cartridge. But if you want that range, I think the 6.5 Grendel is the best option. Couldn't have put it better myself. Well, thank you, Dave. And you know what? No matter which cartridge you pick, guys, make sure you get all of your ammo here at ammo.com. Click that link down in the description and the pinned comment, and we will see you out on the range.